Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie. I make videos about knitting and fiber arts and yarn. Today's video is gonna be a super chill knitting podcast. I think it's probably gonna be a shorter one depending on how long I ramble for, but I wanted to update you guys on some of the things I've been working on because it's been a little while since my last knitting podcast and I've been, I've been knitting. So I like to do these every so often, every month or so, depending on how much I'm knitting. It really kind of varies, but I wanna at least have, you know, a decent amount of things to show you. So yeah, I'm just gonna go through everything that I've been making since my last podcast and talk about it. So grab your project if you haven't already so that you can knit along with me and yeah, we're just gonna get straight into it. I do just wanna acknowledge the fact that I'm in a different location to normal. So this is not my room. If you're familiar with my videos, you would know that this is, looks nothing like my room because it's not. This is actually my cousin's room. Long story short, my house is being kind of renovated, not like intensely about we're having the whole house repainted and we also are getting the carpets redone but that's actually going to happen a little bit later now so yeah basically it's being repainted at the moment so we've had to move out for three weeks hopefully it doesn't take longer than three weeks so we've moved in with my auntie and uncle and this is my cousin's room she does not currently live here so lucky for me i'm able to stay in her room for a few weeks um she really likes toys and like squishmallows and honestly I kind of get it, so I'm probably gonna end up just cuddling this throughout this whole video because it's just so soft and squishy, but yeah. Anyway, that's where I am. Uh, I, feel, I feel like this is the best filming location I could find. It's not the best lighting in this room, but she does have this like cute like makeup light, I think, that I'm just using as like a ring light. So uh, hopefully, hopefully it works. Hopefully it's still a vibe. This is kind of gonna be my base for the next few weeks. I'm hoping it isn't longer than three weeks. I've brought you know, several projects with me here. I've left a lot of yarn back at home, but hopefully I've got enough with me to last for the next few weeks. Honestly, I have so many active whips that I feel like I'll be fine. I have like a really busy couple of weeks ahead of me. So it's just like a bit of an intense period of time, especially considering my book is coming out like a few days after we are supposed to move back in. Hopefully we actually move back in then. I would like to be at home <laughs> when that happens, but yeah, it's just, it's a lot going on, but it's all, it's all good, all exciting things. So yeah, anyway, that's that. So my first finished object is one that I worked on for a really long time. I don't know exactly know how long it was. I was definitely still working on it in the last podcast. I know for a fact I finished it after then. But yeah, I was very nervous I was gonna run out of yarn for this project because I bought less than what the pattern said I needed because I was like, I'm gonna make it more cropped, but then like I was starting to get really nervous. But it all worked out in the end and especially after blocking, it fits exactly how I wanted it. So I'm very happy. And yeah, so that is my Monday sweater by Petite Knit. Um, yeah, definitely as if you're familiar with the pattern, this is definitely a cropped version. I'm gonna try it on for you because, you know, I'm not already wearing a jumper, so it's not too difficult. I'll just like get up slightly so you can see kind of where it sits. But yeah, so this is, this is it. I am genuinely so happy with how this has come out. It's much thinner than most of my jumpers because I would not normally knit a jumper in fingering weight yarn. This is probably closer to a DK because I held it with a lace weight brushed up hacky yarn, but still it is just like, I don't know. I can't even think of the last time I knit an entire sweater using, I think, what did, what did I end up using for this? I think I ended up using my 3.75 millimeter needles for the body, I'm pretty sure. I can't think of the last time I used such small needles for such a big project. So yeah, it's thinner than most of my jumpers in terms of like something made with wool. It's much thinner than what I'm used to and it's actually really lovely. It's perfect for this time of year where the weather's a bit up and down. So I've just kind of been throwing it on, on like days where it's just like a bit in between and I'm like, oh, I don't really want to put on like a bulky jumper, but I do need something. So this has been, this has been really great. And I'm excited to kind of wear it more as the weather cools down and we're heading into autumn now in Australia. So yeah, I'm definitely going to get more wear out of this. So I finished it kind of in like the perfect timing. So if you didn't catch my last podcast, this yarn that I used for this project is the Chaos Yarn Organic soft merino and the chaos yarn organic brush alpaca held together i think the shade is charming i'm pretty sure that's what it's called it's this beautiful like coral pink i just i fell in love with this color when i bought this yarn in sweden uh, in stockholm and it was the first yarn purchase that i did on my trip last year and i bought it with this project in mind so i'm very proud of myself for like buying the yarn and like sticking to the project i'd planned for it i honestly bought so much yarn on that trip with so many different projects in mind some of them have kind of changed some of them i've started and not finished but this is the first one that i finished so i'm very 
proud of myself for doing that. The pattern is it's pretty simple. It does use German short rows, so that was something that I have not done on a raglan sweater before, which might sound crazy because I feel like it is my Kind, might be kind of common but I don't know I think I used to be a bit like intimidated by German short rows so I wouldn't really go for patterns that do that and I'm definitely not confident enough to design with German short rows yet I do really want to challenge myself with doing that this year with maybe some future designs but obviously you need to kind of try something out before you go and like incorporate it in your own design so I'm not going to be like let me ride a German short row pattern when I'm not confident with German short rows like I've used them in like socks and shorts I've used them in I use them in the mini mock neck for like the neck shaping. But yeah, I just hadn't used them in a raglan, so it was kind of like breaking my brain trying to figure out how that even works. But I really, really like how it just makes the front, you know, sit nicely and the back sit everything just like sits really nicely. And yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have like a ton to say about the pattern. Like it's pretty straightforward. It's a basic stockinette raglan jumper with um I like how it has like su like super long kind of cuffs. Um hopefully you can see that. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Okay. I think this is because of the light. I'm going to just, I'm going to stay away. I hope it's not doing that. Oh my God. It's doing that with my whole jumper. Oh no. That's awful. Okay. Let me just turn this light down a bit. Mm, that's a bit better. Okay. Anyway, hopefully that's not too distracting. I like how it has these long cuffs and also the long ribbing at the bottom. It's a little bit hot, I'm gonna take this off. And yeah, the yarn has worked up so, so nicely. I've worn this a fair bit. It's peeling a little bit on the sleeves, but nothing too crazy. And uh, generally the rest of it looks pretty, pretty good. So, I mean, the sleeves is kind of always where it's gonna pill first because it's the most like friction around that area. So not uh, anything that's out of the ordinary. And yeah, it's so, so soft as, you know, is in the name, <laughs> organic soft merino, but also the alpaca. I have some more of this yarn in a beautiful, like pistachio green color. So I'm very excited to use that. Um, I plan on designing something with it. So we'll see, we'll see how I go. But I have like a, more like a vest quantity for that than a sweater quantity. So yeah, we'll see. But I was pretty happy with how much I was able to get out of four skeins of each yarn. So like four of the merino held with four skeins of the alpaca. I was able to get an entire jumper. Obviously it is more cropped. I would definitely need it more if I wanted to make it longer, but it blocked out really nicely because you can go on my Instagram and see like the before and after blocking was pretty drastic for this one. So yeah, definitely needed a block, but uh, very happy with, with how it turned out after blocking. This is my first petite knit sweater pattern that I've knit for myself. So I did the Jenny sweater last year for my mum, but I don't think any of the other petite knit patterns that I've done have been sweaters. I've done the ruffle socks and the Sophie scarf, but yeah, this is my first petite knit sweater. Well, my second, but my first one for me. So yeah, uh, very happy with it. It's obviously a super simple pattern, like it's really basic, but it's, that's kind of, that's what I wanted. So that's what I got. So that's the only FO that I can show you. I do have another one that the design I've been working on, but unfortunately it is a secret. I am very sorry. I wish I could show you. Uh, yeah, not much to say on that for now, but you'll see it eventually. I'm very sorry. I can't show you now. Trust me. I, I, I really, really want to show you because I'm so bad at keeping secrets. I'm so bad, but yeah, I'm not going to, I'm going to resist the temptation and yeah just just know there's there's a whole other jumper that I've knit in this time that unfortunately I can't show you anyway so moving on to whips I have three to show you I'll start with this one because it's one that I was working on in the last podcast I went back and just checked to see you know what I've worked on since then and I think I said in the podcast I started this the night before I filmed it so that was a while ago I feel like uh, I feel like it's yeah definitely a bit, it's been a bit of a hot minute since I've done a podcast so that is the DRK everyday socks I have finished the first sock so it's kind of like half an FO because I've already finished one out of two socks uh they look so funny when they're not on my feet like I literally look at this when I first finished it as well I was like have I like seriously like messed up the measurements or something because how is this supposed to fit my foot like it just looks so long but I think it's because before you like when it's not stretched out, like, cause it's a, it's like a two by two rib before you stretch it out. It just looks so like thin. It's like, how is this ever going to fit my foot? And also just like, looks so long, but I can assure you it fits my foot perfectly. I'm not going to put it on my foot and then like kick my leg in the air. It's just, 
not gonna happen. Uh, maybe I can insert a photo here of what it looks like on my foot because I did take one. But yeah, I'm thrilled with how the first sock turned out. As I said, this is the every the DRK Everyday Socks pattern by Andrea Maori, and I'm using Woolen Works Fingering Sock Yarn in the colorway Neon Light. It's a beautiful, just like neon speckled yarn, as you can see. Um, and yeah, it's been so much fun to work up and just like have all the little colors like change throughout. And yeah, it's a really simple two by two rib pattern, but I really enjoyed specifically, I think this is called a Flegal Hill. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Um, I just love the way that the, the heel shaping is worked in this pattern. Um, it's not something I've tried before. And then it obviously has like the stockinette bit behind. Yeah, it's not something that I've tried before, but Definitely something I kind of enjoyed and loved the look of. So I'm glad that I got to, you know, try another, you know, sock technique out. This is my first time working a sock from the toe up. The other socks that I've made were all from the cuff down. So I think this is actually like my, my third pair of socks. So when I say all, the two other socks that I knit, two other pairs were from the cuff down. But yeah, this is from the toe up. And yeah, I, I, I enjoy both methods. So I'm glad I'm just kind of like, building up my sock skill, sock repertoire, <laughs> if that makes sense. And yeah, I've started the second one. I haven't been working on these as actively because as I said, I was working on another whole project, uh, which kind of was a bit more urgent with the deadline and stuff. So uh, unfortunately have had to kind of put these on the back burner, but they're so good to just like take around with me. Perfect, just like on the go uh, project. So definitely still been kicking on. Yeah, I've started the second sock. I'm just currently working through the sole of the sock. I haven't gotten to the heel shaping just yet, but we'll get there. Uh, so that's been great. Speaking of socks, I actually did just receive uh, my order of the sock project, which is the new book by Summer Lee from Summer Lee Knits. I saw that she was coming out with a book and it was on <laughs> like number one on every single book chart in the craft world that I am um, Kind of obsessively stalking for obvious reasons <laughs> but yeah so i obviously could see that there was a lot of demand for this book and it just looked like a perfect book for the stage that i'm in when it comes to socks where i'm still kind of new to it and i don't know everything and when i'm trying to find patterns it's kind of hard for me because i like don't know you know some of the, i don't know all the okay i fully got cut off mid-sentence because my battery died good thing i had a spare battery. Uh, I've also just noticed the lights were just like being a bit annoying. So I'm gonna turn that off. We're gonna resume from where I was up to and what I was talking about. Um, but yeah, thank God I had a spare battery because I would have had to then charge my battery and then that would have been really bad. Uh, so anyway, what was I saying? I was talking about the book, the Summer Lee book. Yeah, I think just in this phase where I'm in where I don't necessarily know everything about socks, I'm still pretty new at it and I'm really wanting to kind of explore more and learn more and make more socks. It was just the perfect book. It's got kind of everything you need. I'm actually, uh, let me just run and, and grab it quickly. I don't know why I didn't think to like show you before. So yeah, this is the book, The Sock Project. It's pretty thick. It's definitely thicker than what my book's gonna be. And yeah, it's got so many patterns. I think it's 25 patterns. It's got so much information about, it's like, it says on the back, 25 patterns, five different heels, cuff down socks, toe up socks, and then tips on sizing and fit. It really has like everything that you need. Like it's like a sock Bible basically. So yeah, I bought the book and I'm very, very excited to kind of get stuck in. I think the next pair of socks that I make when I, once I finish these will be something from this book. Not sure which pattern I'm gonna make yet, but something from here. So yeah, I'm kind of like, I'm embracing my sock era. I'm enjoying it. It's really fun. And hopefully by the time winter comes around, I will have many more pairs <laughs> to wear because I've decided that I actually love wearing socks. Wearing knit socks, obviously. I feel like I need to clarify that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the next project that I have kind of been working on pretty on and off, like I was working on it. And then once I started that other project, the one that I can't talk about, I kind of put it to the side, but now I've picked it back up and I definitely want to try and finish it before my book comes out. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Probably need to get a move on on it if that is to happen, but yeah. I'm making a second sample of my Lily Cardigan. This is actually the first pattern from my book that I'm making a second time. So let me just try to find the best way to show you. I'm kind of, I mean, I've worked up, or I don't know if I, I can't even remember if I finished it or not, but I'm working up currently the front left panel. So it's a bit hard to kind of show you, but yeah, basically I've done the whole body bottom section and now I'm gonna have to work up all the, 
the three panels for the, the two fronts and obviously the back. So this is kind of where I'm at. Um, but I was very excited to knit this up because I'm using the Woolen Works DK Suri Silk, which is her brand new base. This is where I've currently got left of my first skein. So I've done all of this, like, <laughs> so hard to show you. All of this using less than one skein. I haven't even finished it yet. Um, I only have three skeins for this project. The great thing about this is it's 100 grams, so it comes with so much yardage. Whereas the yarn that I used for the first sample was the Woolen Gang Take Care Mohair, which comes in 50 gram skeins. So yeah, I, I'm gonna have more than enough because I think I used just over four skeins of Take Care Mohair. So basically having three skeins of this, so 300 grams is more than enough to make my size. So I've decided to make the body, I made it just like a little bit longer. I think I did like an extra 10 rows before I split for the sleeves, just cause, uh, it's like pretty oversized anyway, so I figured kind of making it a bit longer couldn't really hurt and I, I had the extra yarn, so uh, that's not an issue, it's not a concern. So um, yeah, I just thought why not also to kind of have a bit of a point of difference between this one and my last one. Obviously they're different yarns, so that's already a point of difference. Um, this one is so, so soft, like possibly the softest thing I've ever knit with in my life, which I think everyone who's knit with this base so far has has agreed on it's it's definitely a very silky soft experience to knit with this feels like you're knitting with a cloud because there's only suri and silk in this which is just insane i didn't even mention which colorway this is so this is the colorway high barbie which is from her barbie collection and it just looks like a marshmallow don't you agree like the pink and the white and the soft and squishiness, fluffiness of this yarn. It's just giving marshmallow cloud energy. And I thought it'd be perfect for the Lily cardigan, which seems to be one that a lot of people are excited to make. So that makes me very happy. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna keep working on this. Maybe I'm gonna even work on it a bit today. I'm kind of feeling more motivated now that I've like pulled it out of its project bag. And obviously I'm getting so excited because my book is coming out so, so soon. It's like just under four weeks from now. I think actually because because of the American time zone, Australian time zone difference, uh, it's literally four weeks today that my book comes out, which is insane. So I think I can finish this in four weeks. So challenge accepted. But yeah, obviously I'm getting very excited about that. Uh, I mean, I have been obviously very excited about it, but I'm, it's getting really real. I can't believe it's so soon. Um, if you haven't pre-ordered it yet, you obviously still can and it would mean the absolute world to me if you want to make this pattern and all of the other patterns that are going to be in the book or any of the other patterns it's available for pre-order the links in the description as per usual and yeah i'm so excited also if you wanted to check out the ravelry pages for all of the patterns they are up i haven't really like officially announced that but they're there so if you want to stalk the ravelry to get ready in advance for making the patterns if you are planning on getting any of them so yeah, uh, anyway, I honestly love this pattern. I think it's pretty, it was pretty underrated by me um, while I was making it. I was like, wasn't really sure about it. And then once I finished it and kind of got it exactly how I wanted it, which took a little bit of tri trial and error, I loved it, obviously. I mean, I wouldn't have put it in the book if I didn't like it, but it's just like the prettiest, daintiest little lace stitch that goes throughout the front sections and then also along the back and then also it'll be on the sleeves as well. This is kind of like a combination of a mindless knit and also it kind of has a little bit of interest obviously as you're working on it because you do have to do the lace stitch uh, but there's only four rows of the lace stitch and two of them are just purling every stitch so it's really only two different lace patterns that you have to memorize and they're very small so it's very kind of easy to kind of get into the rhythm of it and you don't have to like look at the pattern the whole time so you can still like work. I, I work on this in front of the tv and haven't made many mistakes so that's been good and yeah this yarn has definitely taken a little bit of time to get used to using just because it's so so soft and like slippery but overall it's working out really really nicely for this pattern I'm just really glad that there's a Suri option in this weight of yarn that works for this pattern because when I wrote it there was not. So I'm really happy that, yeah, I'm just stoked that Chloe's now stocking this incredible base and I would highly recommend whenever she does another collection or in stock update, uh, if you're thinking about buying, I would, I would recommend this base. It's genuinely so good. I think she said it was her best selling base from the Barbie collection and it was her first time offering the base. So yeah, it's worth the hype. It's taken me a while to make another sample for my book because obviously I don't need a billion 
knits and especially considering there's 18 patterns of the book I definitely am not going to be making seconds of all of them unless I choose to like sell some of the samples um just to like make space but I definitely do want to make seconds of some of the patterns so I'm um, yeah I'm excited to kind of just like try different yarns as well just to like show what the patterns look like in the different yarns so yeah you can look forward to that hopefully you know throughout the year I'll just you know when the time it feels when it when it feels right you know and I find the right yarn and I you know have the desire to I will definitely be um making some second versions of some of the patterns okay and this last one that I wanted to show you is one that I really haven't like posted about at all I don't know why I think just because it like hasn't looked like aesthetic yet I think once I've done you'll see like the main bit uh once it looks better then I'll be able to kind of take more photos and stuff and, and you know post more about it because uh, I am flying through this project so this is a test knit that I'm working on um, it's for Midsummer Knits uh, Emma it's actually her first pattern and it's the heartless top if you follow Emma I'm sure you'll be familiar with this one because I feel like it's literally like the design she's most well known for but like it didn't have a pattern like she's never written a pattern for it um or for anything emma and i've become friends over the past i don't know year or so maybe we're both big swifties we both love knitting we both make content so we've got a lot of things to connect over and um yeah it's been really amazing to kind of watch her journey as she's kind of gained more of a following on her social media and she's just a creator that i really really enjoy watching as well as also just like a person to talk to but yeah i really really enjoy her content so if you haven't already checked out her Instagram and her YouTube channel, I'd highly recommend. I'm going to show you the project. So this is her heartless top. It doesn't look like a heart because I can't for the life of me get this part to sit the way that it's meant to. It will sit properly once I've done. There's like an I-cord edging and like a wire that's going to go in here. So it won't look like a weird deformed circle when it's done. But for now, unfortunately, this is like the best I can do to make it look like a heart is just like to pull this... Oh, how do I do this to like pull this down I think you can yeah you can see you can see the heart shape it's there um but yeah okay pretend that looks like a heart so I can just hold it normally but yeah this is the heartless top um I was very very excited when she put out the testing call and I thought you know what I have some DK yarn it's been in my stash for a very long time and I've been you know loving this design ever since she first posted it and I know she wore it to the opening night of the Eras tour which I was insanely jealous of her for even being able to go to the opening night of the Eras tour but anyway I've yeah I've definitely been invested in you know the process of her getting this pattern out and so I thought you know why not test it because I don't know I clearly have no other projects going on right now no I do but honestly I've worked this up so fast that like it just isn't even a big deal like it's not even a big deal at all I'm like shocked at how quickly I've worked this up I did like a solid amount of this last week when I was catching up on love is blind because I got so behind because I was like the concerts and everything I wasn't like probably able to like invest in this season but I like love love is blind so I really wanted to just like sit down and like binge and then I was like catching up and then as I was catching up like literally while I was watching them they dropped the next set of episodes so then I just got to keep going it was amazing so yeah I did a lot of that while watching which to be honest doing the heart bit was a bit annoying because I had to kind of like keep going back to the chart but it honestly doesn't take that long to do the heart because you're really just doing these like outside bits which isn't actually that much so that didn't take too long and then the rest of it I was able to you know to do whilst watching Love is Blind so that was great I'm really happy with how it's kind of turned out I've basically done like the whole top section and now I'm working on the body the yarn I'm using is Ching Fiber Dashing DK I think and the colorway is I think it's Sherbet pretty sure um, it's from there. What was it called? Like alien, mm, kawaii alien, maybe something like that. Space alien, something collection from 2022. So I've had this yarn for a while. <laughs> Bought this yarn. Yeah, I think I was like in Europe when I ordered the yarn when it came out, and then I came home and the yarn arrived, and it was great. And then I just haven't used it. I did initially think I was going to use it for another project that I ended up scrapping. So I had unraveled some of the yarn from that. But for the most part, I have not used this yarn. So I was so happy to finally, finally be able to use it because it's beautiful and it's working out so, so lovely. Like I'm just obsessed with the way that like it's all this beautiful pastel, but then it has these like gorgeous, gorgeous kind of dark pink and like almost like a burnt orange or mustard yellow I don't know just colors I wouldn't really expect 
to kind of go with this like really pretty pastel base uh the speckles just really really like add some extra interest but yeah I'm really really happy with how it's turned out so far it's a really lovely yarn to knit with and I'm using my clover needles which are really really nice as well so I'm just kind of like you know speed knitting through it the pattern recommended that you do the kind of neck and sleeve finishings before knitting the rest of the body so that you could probably try it on so that's what I did this is actually a double knitted edging uh, which you know takes a bit of time but it's fine I am a double knitting appreciator <laughs> so it's totally okay and then obviously it's a folded over neck trim which I also I'm a big fan of and I've incorporated in a lot of my designs so big fan very happy with that I've got a decent amount of time to finish this I think the deadline is like mid-April so if I somehow end up getting like sick of working on this and end up starting something else it's not the end of the world I'll definitely still have time to finish it but honestly I'm on a roll with it I'm enjoying it and I think I'm probably just gonna now that it's like just straight stocking it in the round for a while I think I'm probably just gonna keep working on it but yeah that's that's my current whip and I don't have anything else to show you because obviously I do have other whips, but I have not made any progress on them. But because I've brought them here and I don't have much temptation of like other yarns, I think I brought like maybe one skein of sock yarn. I don't even know. I can't remember. I don't know. If, I don't actually know if I brought any other yarn that's not for the whips that I'm working on. So hopefully this is like a good kind of like self-control period of time where I like have no choice but to work on the stuff that I have here because I'm not allowed to go back to my house uh for the next few weeks where all my yarn is so we'll see we'll see i don't know that's that's like the only like exception to that will be if i buy more yarn but i don't plan on doing that so let's hope that works out but yeah that's that's everything i've been working on i feel like everything is like so like colorful and pink like if i just like hold all of these up together like the aesthetic is, is, is aesthetic -ing. That's for sure. I do have an exciting announcement, which I forgot to mention in my last video, but in like two weeks time, I'm going to be in Canberra for the Australian Yarn Festival, which is the first time it's happening. So I'm very, very excited about that. I'm actually gonna be a guest speaker. I'm gonna be on three panels, which is crazy, but yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that. So if you're able to be in Canberra on the 23rd, 24th, of March. You can do either day or both days. The tickets are really reasonably priced. Um, it's going to be amazing. There's going to be heaps of talks and a big market and workshops and kind of community events and just so much opportunity for kind of connecting with other fiber arts, knitting, yarn, crochet enthusiasts. And also if you're you know in the fiber arts industry, it's a great opportunity to connect with other people who are doing the same thing. And yeah, I'm just, I'm very, very, very excited about it. So yeah, if you're able to get to Canberra in a few weeks time, that's accessible to you, especially if you're, you know, obviously living in Canberra, but also if you're in Sydney or Melbourne where it's not too far, like I think it's only a three hour drive from Sydney, seven hour drive from Melbourne, so it's not crazy. I would love to see you there, but if not, I'll definitely be vlogging the weekend. So look forward to that as well. And yes, yeah, so that's happening. And then also I have a wedding this weekend and then I have a wedding the weekend after that. And then Canberra and then the weekend after that, I'm going away for the Easter weekend with my boyfriend. And then the week, no, and then the day after that, <laughs> my book comes out. So yeah, crazy time, crazy, crazy time, but all good, fun, exciting things. So can't complain. But yeah, anyway, I think I've rambled enough today. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanted to support me on my Patreon, the link is in the description. You get early access to these videos. I do exclusive content. You get pattern discount codes and more. Thank you so much to my Cable Cuties patrons. I'll put your names on the screen. Your support means the absolute world to me. And yeah, make sure to give this video a like if you made it to the end and subscribe if you're not already and also check out my Instagram and TikTok. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!